Due to the graphic nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. The video camera is running. Oh my god! 9 emergency? Give me an ambulance down here! What you're about to see in the next 60 minutes is real. Real cops. Real crooks. Real cases. Everything from state-of-the-art training to terrifying shootouts. The most reckless criminals, the most bizarre and unusual crimes ever captured on tape. From high-speed chases to robbery in progress, from impossible rescues to insane crimes of passion. We've gathered this amazing video from departments all over the world. Much of it has never been seen outside the law enforcement community. What you see may shock you, frighten you, anger you. But we bring it to you for one reason. Because knowledge is power. A power that could save your life. John Bunnell. The video camera is changing the way we look at the world. Tonight it's going to change the way you look at the world of law enforcement. So sit tight. You're about to see crime fighting like you've never seen it before. Lexington County, South Carolina. State Trooper Mark Bullard only wanted to stop this driver for speeding. But this hard-charging Mustang won't be corralled. The driver screams through the gentle countryside at breakneck speed. Blowing through stop signs and railroad crossings. No one is safe, not even the family pet. Or a busload of school children. Down the road, he blasts through another stop sign. Be careful, you Suddenly, Trooper Bullard is driving blind through the dust. He races to close in. But when the Mustang veers off road, the inevitable happens. The driver loses traction and three wheels out of control. But somehow, the suspect jams on. What happens next chills the officer's blood. Oh my god! Oh my god! What you're seeing is what Trooper Bullard sees as his car spins a full 360 degrees. Incredibly, he's able to recover. He races up the road to catch the suspect. But it's too late. The Mustang ran one stop sign too many. Amazingly, the minivan driver walks away with minor bruises. And the suspect lives to stand trial. This greased lightning pursuit careened from the main road to dirt road to off-road. What began as a simple speeding ticket turned into a runaway roller coaster, leading State Trooper Bullard on a pulse-pounding pursuit he'll never forget. Buenos Aires, Argentina. A news cameraman follows police on a deadly mission, the capture of this notorious gang leader. He was taken peacefully in the most dangerous part of town, but this arrest is far from over. Ready for anything, the armed officers carry bulletproof shields. What happens next is terrifying. As soon as they enter the parking lot, the group gets ambushed. Their prisoners, fellow gangsters, open fire from building tops and alleyways. Half of the officers make it to safety across the lot, but the rest get pinned in this entranceway, along with the cameraman. They all know that as soon as their assailants change positions, they'll be exposed to more gunfire. These sitting ducks need to get to safety 
fast. Help is on the way. Incredibly, three of their comrades return to lead them across the lot. After quickly forging a plan, the group is set to make the charge. Amazingly, the cameraman runs the gauntlet armed only with his camera, and he keeps it rolling the entire way. Finally, they all make it to safety, and now the officers turn the tables, returning a barrage of gunfire at the criminals. Once the dust has settled, several officers suffer wounds, and two criminals lie dead. In this showdown with murderous outlaws, both the cameraman and these cops put their lives on the line to cover the action. Only the cameraman had to do it without a shield or a gun. Jacksonville, Florida. A highway patrol officer spots an overloaded landscaper's truck. When he tries to stop it, the driver bolts. For a moment, it looks like it's all over. But the suspect recovers and takes to the freeway. In a desperate attempt to pass traffic, the suspect careens into the median. The officer stays right with him and almost smashes into a guardrail. Seven, what's your 20? Suddenly, the suspect cuts through the median. Moments later, the suspect simply pulls over. The chase ends as suddenly and mysteriously as it began. We see this all the time, where some people are just afraid of the cops, and there's no reason to be unless you've done something wrong. Most times, we pull over the average Joe, it's just to tell him their taillights out. The suspect had no reason to run. He later told officers he panicked when he saw the flashing lights. Fortunately, the Florida cops were able to stop him and bring this pursuit to a sensible conclusion. Coming up on world's wildest police video. It's all out war. When rioters storm the city. Car thieves storm the highway. Soccer fans storm the field. And demented drivers storm the streets. The stakes are high. The heat is extreme. Next. Fan. Gutless game. Terrifying trucks. It's a world gone mad. And it's up to police to shake things up. In Bixby, Oklahoma, police respond to reports of a drunk, abusive husband. Fleeing in his car, he's already blown a tire and crashed through a fence. But nothing is slowing him down. Not even a police car coming the other way. Look out, Stacy. As the suspect speeds off, the officer in pursuit recognizes a potentially deadly situation. Dragging the chain. At 70 miles per hour, the sparking metal whips around like the tail of a snake. And things are only getting worse. We had a very large chunk of metal come out and go west. The rim gives out. This car is now grinding over pavement on the brake rotor, and it's still picking up speed. Stopping this crazed driver is important, but public safety comes first. See, I'm trying to stay kind of to the left and get these intersection lights to warn these people. The man blows through stop signs and treats red lights like they don't even exist. Amazingly, units get ahead of the chase, stopping cross traffic before someone gets hurt. The suspect's battered car sparks and sputters. 
But this stubborn senior citizen isn't quitting until he runs out of road or his car dies completely. And that's when this white beating wild man does the unthinkable. He accelerates right into the headlights of oncoming traffic, narrowly missing another vehicle. Moments later, the car finally gives out, rolling to a sparking stop. The suspect gets out with his hands up. But the officers have seen how violent he can get. They take no chances. The man tries to act innocent. But the police will let a judge decide his fate. After a tire shredding, chain dragging, fire-breathing chase like this one, you'd think the suspect would learn his lesson. He didn't. Incredibly, a year and a half after this pursuit, he was arrested again for DUI and running from the law. Mineola, New York. The owner of this jewelry store helps what he thinks is a customer. It's actually an armed robber. His accomplice is about to join him. The owner buzzes him in. When the owner takes his eyes off them, one robber pulls a gun. The terrified jeweler gets on the ground. As the robber ties him up, his partner puts jewelry into a bag. Suddenly, a customer appears at the door. The second robber pretends to be an employee who's closing up early. It works. You'd think after a close call like that, they'd pick up the pace of this robbery. But these two are so arrogant, they take their sweet time. But a minute later, the store has another unwanted visitor. Maybe these guys shouldn't have picked such a popular jeweler. Again, the robber pretends to be an employee. Five minutes, five minutes. He figures they'll be done in five minutes. In fact, they're done right now. There's another unwanted caller at the door. This time, it's the police. The guy at the counter thinks he can get away. But how did they get there so fast? Before being tied up, the owner called police by activating a silent alarm. Thanks to his quick thinking, these crooks are now running scared. One robber scrambles to the back, hoping to find an exit. But his partner has a police revolver in his face. He has no choice but to open up. Two officers burst in. Get on the floor! With one suspect in custody, an officer goes searching for the other. The male white, the male white gray shirt with a baseball hat. Somebody in the back. Somebody in the back. Don't move. In less than a minute, both suspects are in custody. Thanks to quick thinking and quick response, these slow-moving crooks didn't stand a chance. Sports and police, they don't belong together. But the fact is that violence at sporting events is growing worse every year. And the police find themselves in a constant struggle to protect innocent fans from fans who only want one thing, blood. Heysel Stadium, Brussels. During the European soccer final, British thugs overwhelmed security police and attacked rival Italian fans. Hundreds were injured in the rioting. 42 people lost their lives. Amsterdam, Holland. Eight years later, 5,000 British fans arrived for a soccer match. But more than 1,800 of them don't have tickets. Many of these fans are the same who wreaked havoc in Brussels. They're not here for the game. They're here to do battle. Dutch riot police double their forces. Determined to prevent any bloodshed, they block off access to the stadium. Those fans without tickets are led to a detainment area and searched. But the mob grows restless. Suddenly, the crowd breaks through the police barrier 
and pours into the streets. The gutless mob shows no mercy as they viciously attack innocent Dutch fans. One Dutch fan wields a knife in self-defense, slashing an attacker who gets too close. Innocent bystanders are trapped in the melee. Some Dutch fans try to fight back, but they're outnumbered 10 to 1. Police try to contain the riot until backup can arrive. But the troublemakers pelt cops with rocks and street signs, forcing police to strike back with canine units. Finally, reinforcements arrive. In a bold effort to restore order, mounted troops storm the crowd. The unruly mob is forced to retreat. Moments later, they surrender. Over the next two days, more than 600 British thugs are shipped back to England. Miraculously, no one was killed in the rioting. Thanks to the calm and decisive action of Dutch police, the tragedy and bloodshed of Brussels has been avoided. Maria, Ohio. An enraged woman has just sped through a school zone. I just need you to sign your right up there. Nearly running down several students. What person did I endanger? The officer just wants her to sign the ticket so he can send her on her way. I'm on Bagley Road right in front of the high school. But this woman mistakenly believes that the officer has to tell her the names of the people she endangered. You want me to sign that, and okay. I do not agree to sign it. Right. right on there because you clarified who the persons were I endangered. And the officer tries to reason with her. You, this is an offense that you can go to jail for. Faced with that possibility, she takes the ticket. Do you see what this says? Endangering property and persons. And he said, on Bagley Road. And I said very nicely, will you specify that? He says, all you need to do is sign it. You'll get it signed, OK? But did you hear me ask him nicely the first time? Her anger has reached the boiling point. There's my signature, and here you are, sir. And there's your bullets, and there's your gun. And the first time I said specify where the people are that I endanger. Again, the police take this in stride and are ready to let her go. I am leaving now. You got your signature. No, you got to get your copy of the citation. Yeah. Send it to me on my press Get out of the car. Get out of the car. When she practically runs down these officers, they have no choice but to take her off the road. No, sir. You're under arrest. No. They call for backup. But now, another problem. The woman's cat is also in the car. No, you cannot leave my cat in the car. We'll take care of it. No, you won't. You're resisting arrest right now. Yes, I am resisting arrest because this is my personal property. But once that cold metal is on her wrists, she knows she's on her way to jail. And you will take care of my cat when you say roll down the window. That's a live animal! And so am I! And by the time backup arrives, the woman is sitting in the patrol car. This woman chose to make things worse than they had to be. Now, instead of driving away with just a ticket, she's being driven away in the back of a police car. And if she needs to know the names of the people she endangered, she only has to look at their badges. Coming up on World's Wildest Police Videos, Street Punks. I knew if I couldn't get back out, I was dead meat. Give victims no mercy. Drunk drivers. He's wasted. I never realized it. Give cops the runaround. And violent protesters. Give San Francisco a night it won't forget. It's going to happen real fast. Next. <laughs> Criminals try anything. They try speed. They try fear. I got it. The whole thing on video came across. They try force. But as hard as they try, cops try even harder. Burlington, North Carolina. Police pursue a drunk driver. This guy has some place to go, and he's endangering lives to get there. He misses an oncoming car by inches and veers back into his own lane. After running a red light and almost plowing into a pickup, the driver finally reaches his destination, his own driveway. 
officers get ready for anything. But the driver casually gets out of his car and jogs toward his house. An officer runs up and easily tackles the drunken man. Sometimes drunken drivers think by simply making it home, everything will be OK. But they're in for a big surprise. This drunk driver leads police to his trailer park driveway. Then he takes off running. He must have forgotten his house key, because a moment later, he races back to his truck. Running scared and running drunk, he's chased all the way around the pickup, and then all the way around again. By the fourth go around, the alcohol is starting to get the better of him. Finally, the man stops running, and the officer takes him down. Over in Arkansas, police have been trying to halt this DUI suspect for almost an hour. But this guy is so gone, they just can't pin him down. Finally, the driver stops on this dirt road. The patrol car gives him a nut. Where does he feel it's safe to go now? You guessed it, his driveway. For some reason, these drunk drivers thought if they could just make it home, they would be home free. Their intoxication made them feel untouchable. But it was also the thing that made them so easily apprehended. Kalamazoo, Michigan. 4.30 AM, a man breaks into a convenience store. Incredibly, he finds the cash drawer has been left wide open. But what does he do? He shuts it. This crook is after something more valuable to him than money. What could drive this man to break through a glass door and boldly ignore security cameras? Cigarettes. He just wants a smoke. He grabs a couple of cartons, then he decides he wants cash, too. But he just closed the register. And nothing but nothing he does can get it open again. He gives up on lining his pocket. Cigarettes are what he really wants and cigarettes are what he gets, all he can carry. Smoking is legal. Breaking and entering is not. This man's addiction turned out to be very bad for him. Where he's going, he'll have plenty of time to try and kick the habit. Sao Paulo, Brazil. A peaceful protest against the national phone company is about to turn violent. A group of angry demonstrators tries to storm the company's central headquarters. Security police rush to the scene, but find themselves desperately outnumbered. Sensing their advantage, several protesters try to rush past the police. When officers take a man into custody, the crowd fights back. A violent clash erupts as one demonstrator smashes a bottle over an officer's head. Police try to arrest the man but quickly come under attack from other rioters. Before long, the riot spills into the heart of the city. Hurling bricks and bottles, protesters offer fierce resistance, turning peaceful city streets into a war zone. The arrival of more riot police only makes the crowd wilder. Innocent bystanders fall victim to mob violence, forcing police to take drastic measures. Heavily armed security forces fire tear gas directly into the crowd. The canisters explode throughout the streets, forcing the mob to give up their fight. Police quickly move on the offensive, arresting several protesters. Sadly, many innocent people are injured in the riot. Thanks to a handful of violent protesters, what began as a peaceful demonstration will only be remembered as a day of bloodshed and chaos. A motorcycle is a powerful machine. Riding one requires skill and coordination. But skill and coordination are the first things you lose when you've been drinking. Fort Mill, South Carolina. An officer pulls up behind a biker stopped at a light. The man's a convicted criminal out on probation. And tonight, it looks like he's drunk. Even on a road with no traffic, the biker has a hard time driving a straight line. As soon as he hears the siren, the suspect bolts. Blind drunk at 100 miles an hour, it's only a matter of time before this ride ends in a fiery crash. Amazingly, the 
suspect is not seriously hurt. He runs into the weeds like a rabbit, and the officer goes right after him. Backup arrives. The officers find the man quickly and place him under arrest. This drunken suspect had no respect for the law, and absolutely none for the powerful machine he was riding. Coming up. He's wasted. On World's Wildest Police Videos. A stolen truck. Goes on a rampage. Street gangs go on the warpath. And an angry mob goes out of control. When criminals bring in the heat, cops try to put out the fire. Next. Due to the graphic nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. over when danger hits the road when panic rules the streets that's when a cop goes into action a police car is a powerful machine but when it goes head to head with one of these it's simply out muscle that's when officers deploy their secret weapon they call it backup Lawrence Alabama Police are in pursuit of a stolen rental truck. Several patrol cars join the chase. To stop a vehicle this big, officers need all the backup they can get. On the highway, the suspect suddenly veers onto the median. It's a desperate move to keep his pursuers at bay, but it works. Moments later, he crosses to the opposing lanes, barreling toward oncoming traffic. Then suddenly, the driver charges back over the media, right into the pack of police cars. He seems to be daring the cruisers to box him in. When they finally do, he knocks one of them off the road, earning himself an attempted murder charge. In the following confusion, he breaks from the pack. Even a swerving big rig won't slow down this guy. And neither will a stalled one. He barely makes it around the front of the truck. Soon the driver spots an upcoming roadblock. He panics and swerves into a field. But the truck can't take the terrain and is forced back onto the road. Finally, when the driver slows down to turn, one officer makes his move. The cruiser rams the larger vehicle, shoving it off the road. The truck stalls, and the officers make the arrest. This suspect felt invincible behind the wheel of a big truck, but he wasn't a professional truck driver. The officers took advantage of that weakness. When push came to shove. San Francisco. When the governor vetoes legislation aimed at protecting gay and lesbian workers against job discrimination, 5,000 demonstrators take to the streets in peaceful protest. But things turn ugly when a few hundred extremists try to storm a state building. Police are sorely outnumbered, but if they don't make a stand, the building will be lost. Demonstrators turn barricades into battering rams, smashing through glass doors and windows. To avoid an escalation of violence, riot police withdraw inside. These demonstrators are relentless. They hurl more barricades. The mob swells. The odds are against them, but riot police hold their ground. Radicals launch Molotov cocktails. In the face of mounting danger, riot police keep their cool. They ride out the firestorm of angry protest, and eventually the flames die out. Bloodshed has been avoided, and the building has been spared further damage. Order is finally restored. As a city otherwise known for its culture and diversity, tries to forget a violent night of fiery protest. Police officers work hard to keep the peace but they can't always do it alone. That's when good Samaritans armed only with cell phones can help take dangerous criminals off the streets. Austin, Texas. 
a private investigator heads home for the day. He's left his video camera running after a surveillance job, but he takes a detour when he spots a pickup truck driving erratically. The private eye suspects this is a drunk driver on an afternoon joyride. But when the truck veers headlong into the path of an oncoming bus, there is no doubt. You'd have to be blind drunk to play chicken with a vehicle this size. As the suspect weaves onto the highway, the Good Samaritan calls 911. I'm in a black blazer. I'm reporting a drunk driver. He's taking Southwest Parkway exit. But while he's talking to the dispatcher, the situation turns critical. He hit the wall. He hit the wall. Oh my God, he hit the wall. The slosh driver stops to inspect the damage. The man is stumbling drunk as he examines his ruined paint job. Between the dent and the nausea, the man decides to stop drinking. He just poured out his beer. There's a beer on top of the truck and on the ground. But that doesn't mean he's done risking innocent lives. He's, he's going again. The private eye doesn't have a badge or a siren. He can't even try to pull the guy over. The drunk driver recklessly cuts people off, and all the P.I. can do is keep his camera and his car rolling. I got the whole thing on video too. But there's a point when even following is no longer safe. The driver races ahead. There he goes, he's up the highway. Oh my God, he crossed all the way over. This motorized menace is now heading into oncoming freeway traffic. Holy cow, he crossed all the way over the highway. He's still losing control of the car. And it just gets worse. He's still in the other lane of traffic. He's driving down the other lane of traffic, doesn't realize it. The police caught this bleary-eyed driver just down the road. Luckily, no one was hurt by this drunken menace. But it was the help of a solid citizen. He just hit the wall. He hit the wall. That led cops to the suspect before his luck ran out. There he is. Coming up. Money up front. On the world's wildest police video, cops bust a move. Go, go, go! And undercover officers hit the streets. Put your hands up. As vicious gangbangers make a hit. It's fast and it's wild. Next. Here we go. John's on the main. Daredevil's on the loose. Gangs on the warpath. And police on the move. These prostitutes are not what they appear to be. They're actually undercover cops, working the streets for the law. Go, go, go. But prostitutes have historically been the target of violent abuse and worse. Going undercover, these female cops face serious danger every time they step out into the street. The thing that I fear the most when I'm doing one of these missions is the guy that just, you walk up to him, he pulls a gun out and puts it to your head, demands that you get in the car. Correa, Ohio. These undercover cops get ready for a sting operation. Their job is to wait until suspects offer money for sex. Until that happens, there is no crime and there is no case. Police set up surveillance cameras to monitor the room. Together with cops on the street, they can track the woman's every move. When she gives a signal, cops in the next room will spring the bust. But until then, she's on her own. Out on the streets, a suspect makes his bid. He looks like your average guy. But what he's asking for is very strange. The bag he's carrying also causes concern. He may be armed. Police keep a close watch as she makes her way to the room. That's right, 30 bucks for a spanking. The cop keeps her eye on the bag as the suspect goes for his wallet. She steps in front of the camera, the signal for the bust. The bust goes down easy, and the suspect gets slapped with a hefty fine. But for the next cop to take her turn on the streets, the danger is just getting started. If something bad is going to happen out there, it's going to happen real fast. Um, 
and then it's going to be real important for your cover to get there real fast. Back on the streets, a blue pickup circles the block. Here we go. Big truck customer. Now he's ready for some action. This tough guy says he's looking for something rough, and that could mean trouble. There he is. Walking? Yep. Okay, one male, dark tank top, gray shorts. Come on here. Now they're alone. The suspect bolts the door. Cops in the next room can only wait. But the lady plays it like a pro. She keeps herself between the camera and the suspect at all times, giving the cops next door a clear view of her every move. Seconds later, the money's on the table, and the deal is sealed. She gives the signal, and cops make their move. She gets her man, and he gets busted. But this high-stakes game of seduction is far from over. Soon, she'll be back on the streets, putting fear aside and facing the potential danger. Behind every friendly smile. It's never smart to run from police, especially on a motorcycle. Not on the wrong side of the road or the right side of the road. No matter how fast your machine will go, no matter how good you think you are, no matter how far ahead you get. This guy's looking back at the cops, so he is definitely a fair to you. All you have to do is make that one mistake. One little error, and you're going down. And when you go down on a bike, you go down hard. Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. One of the most popular vacation spots in the South. An officer tries to stop a motorcycle for erratic driving, but the biker's off like a shot. Yes, sir, Ocean the officer stays close on his tail. I'm 10 0, Ocean Boulevard, the suspect is now heading for the hotel district, crowded with hundreds of tourists. The biker takes a shortcut straight into oncoming traffic. The officer keeps his distance, hoping his siren will warn other drivers. The biker thinks he can lose the officer on the hotel strip. He speeds toward it at 100 miles an hour. Ahead, cars wait at an intersection, jammed with pedestrians. Reaching the heavy traffic, the biker tries to cut between the lanes of stopped cars. A huge mistake. He's wrecked, he's wrecked. This biker thought he could outrun the Myrtle Beach police, but he wound up in a hospital bed and the county jail. Norman, Oklahoma. This convicted car thief escaped from prison one year ago. For 12 months, police have been searching for this man. And amazingly, he's been able to elude them until today. The escapee has known the harshness of prison life. He'll do anything to avoid going back there. He tears around this Cadillac, hoping to use it as a smoke screen, but it doesn't work. This turbocharged fugitive is now running low on fuel and high on panic. Another patrol car steps into the line of fire to stop this guy, but the suspect won't even slow down. And when he runs out of road, he's ready to risk everything. Pursuing officers see him turning around, and they move in to cut him off. His desperate high-speed maneuvers have slammed him right into police and right back into prison. 
And how did he elude authorities up until now? Every day for the past year, he dressed up as a woman to conceal his identity. But today, his disguise didn't help. Because he was driving a stolen car. Coming up on World's Wildest Police Videos. Fist flying, gut wrenching, head banging action. Next. In the war against crime, police officers have a full arsenal of weapons at their disposal. But during the last 10 years, a new weapon has emerged, used by the police and the public. The video camera. Tijuana, Mexico. An amateur cameraman captures gang members mugging a man in broad daylight. The cameraman is only 20 feet away. The assailants could spot him easily, but he keeps rolling because he knows the footage can be used as evidence. Once the gangsters get what they want, they scurry away. The man is shaken, but relatively unharmed. They only wanted his money, but too often, street crime is motivated by something more menacing, a lust for violence. Albany, New York, home video records a horrifying incident. A lost man has wandered into street gang territory and suffers a terrible beating by gang members. Each thug takes a turn hitting and kicking. Amazingly, after they're through with him, the man rises to his feet and staggers away. Then the cameraman makes a smart move. He captures the face of each suspect on video for future evidence. When police arrive, defiant gangbangers remain in the area. They even behave like innocent bystanders. But the camera has captured the truth, and it will help convict each one of them. Hudson, Florida. This man has witnessed a group of punks stealing from a convenience store. As he confronts them, one of the thieves strikes him with a bottle. Fortunately, another passing Samaritan videotapes the incident from his car. I took the camera from the back seat, turned the camera on, and was ready to roll on, on it just in case something happened, which it did. Farrell's camera rolls while the man lunges after the punk that hit him, but he's outnumbered. They were like a swarm of bees on me. There was, you know, the, the beer bottles and the uh, soda cans, you know, hit me in the head. Taking a punch and dodging another bottle, Maddox scrambles back to his Jeep. After the third time I got struck in the head, I knew if I couldn't get back up to hold my ground, I was dead meat. Maddox finally makes it into the Jeep and fires the ignition. The punks try to drag him back out. But he takes off. The kids celebrate for now. But the evidence on the tape will lead to their prosecution. I showed it to the cops. They saw it. They watched it right there on the scene. They saw who did the hitting. And they made the arrest. These punks assaulted Ron Maddox for taking down their license plate number, for being a Samaritan. Law enforcement can only do so much. If they get away with this, they'll go do it again. Therefore, I was just trying to be a good citizen. The best thing I could have done for the victim was to catch it on video. The cops were able to use it in court, and that's how the prosecution happened. If it's not safe to intervene in a crime, Samaritans can use video cameras to record the evidence. But they should do it with extreme caution, in case the violence they're watching suddenly turns on them. The video camera is always in my car in case something happens, that's my job. The law moves in, where the road gets rough, where the streets get riotous. I got the whole thing on video camera. And where the highway gets rocking. Anywhere there's danger, that's where police draw the line.